Hello everyone, this is Ace Stocky here. Welcome to another quick Minecraft tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to run you through the process of creating your own uh, Tekkit server. And then the second part of the video is going to be how to connect to a Tekkit server. Uh, for example, your own server or, well, my server once I have it up and running. Just to let you know, what I'm doing now isn't actually creating a Tekkit server for myself, or, well, I will be creating a Tekkit server, but it's not going to be the server that I'm actually going to be using for everyone to connect to, because it's not recommended that you create the server on the system that you play on. It generally ends up running a bit slow when you do that, so this is just going to be, I guess you'd basically call it just a test server, just to kind of show you what you can do. But I guess without further ado, I'm at the Tekkit website, so obviously you've all got Technipack by coming here. And so what you need to do, the first thing you need to do is click on Tekkit 2. And then so you scroll down a bit. So the client's downloaded through the launcher. And that's your normal Technic launcher that you download. We don't want to actually do that. What we want to do is go a bit further down. And we need to come just here. That's a world converter server. This is the one that we want. So when you click on that, it will give you the option to download it. So I'm just going to save it. Uh, somewhere that's going to be easy for me to find. This is just my download accelerator, so it doesn't really matter how you download it. The important thing is that you do download it. I will show you in a second what happens with that. Okay. The next thing that you will need to do is if you want to play on my server or you want to create your own server that you can host online for other people to play, you need to come to this web page. I will attach the link to this in the description. And then you need to come to choose a mode, unmanage, and click download now. Oh, and you'll need to tick the condition box. So click download now and download it. And then once you have that installed, you'll be basically ready to go. So I'm going to close this down now. And I will go and get, there should be a save file here. Here we go, take it to server. I'm just going to move that because that's not where I like to have it. And I will paste it here. And then if you open this up, you can see that there are a number of files and folders and things in there. What I'm going to do is going to extract it. Hopefully, actually, I might just move things over a little bit so it stays in the video. I'm going to say extract your Tekkit server 2. And what that will do is create a new folder and extract all the files into it. So there you can see it there. So this is everything that you need to run your own Tekkit server assuming that you want to play just on a local network. So, assuming you don't want to just play on a local network, there's a bit more configuration to do, but we'll start by double-clicking on launch.bat. And you can see that does a whole lot of things. It comes up with a whole lot of problems. You don't have to worry about any of that. You can see in the background that it just created a number of new files because when it can't find configuration files, it will automatically create them by default for you. So the first time that it runs, it'll have to do this. So you've just got to wait for it to do its thing. And you can see here it says Inf for info, done. If you want some help, type help. So here we can type help. And you can see that it is running and it's doing its thing. Uh, gives you all basically the list of commands you can get. But what I'm going to do is type stop. Now, anytime you have your server running and you want to turn it off, you should type stop and press enter because what that will do is that will, as you can see, it will correctly stop the server by unloading all of the plugins and all of the managers that are in and then make sure that it does a final chunk save to make sure that you haven't lost any of the information because unlike single player, which by default in Minecraft saves the world information every two seconds, servers, depending on how busy they are and how they're configured, sometimes save only every 30 seconds so they kind of store things in RAM and then do a big save dump to, to basically save how much writing they're doing to the hard drive and to stop it having to jump all over the place and slow things down so it's very important to make sure you stop it properly so you can see now there are a lot of files that have been set up the I guess the important one that you're really going to need for just about everything is this thing here called server.properties now by default Windows won't know how to open that, so you'll have to go to open with. I have Notepad++ installed on my system, and I have previously gone to open with and told it to always use this program. But 
if you don't have Notepad++, you can just go Browse, and then say that you want to open it in Notepad, so that's in the Windows folder. There should be NOT, there we go, Notepad.exe, and we can open that up. So there is your server properties file. Now, I'll just really briefly run through each of these. There's a lot more information you can get online if you're looking to try and really understand what these are. The first one, though, is whether to allow portals to the nether and to actually spawn the nether. Now, I believe that particular line, if you set that to false, also stops it spawning the end. So that's just, a, I guess, a bit of a bit of a for info. I always leave that to true. The next thing is the name of the world. So if we go back to my folder that it created, you can see it created world, world nether, and world the end. That, those three things together make up what is effectively the save file for the server. And it called it that because I named the level world. So because this is going to be a TechIt2 server, I'm going to change that name to TechIt2. And the next time we run it, you'll see what that does. Uh, enable query isn't very important. I don't know what that does. Allow flight. Because there are a number of devices like jetpacks and other things that are in industrial craft, and I believe in the latest uh, multiplayer version of Equivalent Exchange is included in the new version of the TechIt server, and it has some items that allow you to fly. You have to have allow flight equals true. Otherwise, when someone does start to fly, it'll basically crash things. This next line, don't change. Uh, don't change the level type either. That's going to be an option that's set up for the future in case you want like a super flat world or anything like that. If you have a, sorry, so skip the enable archon as well. The next one is a world seed. So if you have a particular seed that you really like, that's where you can type that in. Now server IP is not important if you're playing on a local network because by not typing the server IP in, what it will do is it will automatically pick the IP that Windows assigns to this PC through the network configuration that it's using, and it will take that. For those of you using Hamachi, which I am, so double click on Log Me in Hamachi. When you first turn it on, you can see there is a number here. That is the IP that's been assigned to you or to the machine you're on by Hamachi. So if I wanted to use this server, I would then type that in. So I would type in 5.223.204.174 and that will make sure that when people connect to a network on Hamachi that they actually see this machine. Because this is just the test, I'm going to leave that blank and I'll show you how to get around that. So the next thing is spawn NPCs. That's a feature that if you're getting a lot of lag on your server caused by all the things that the NPCs do in their villages, you can turn that to false, but I always leave it on. Whitelist false. Now this is if this this is very important. If you want your server to be only accessible by people that you choose, you turn whitelist to true, and then you can see here there's a whitelist.txt file, and you can actually type people's name in there. So if I type in my Minecraft username and then turn whitelist to true, that means I am the only person who will be able to connect to this server. But because I'm not putting the server online, that won't actually make any difference. Spawn animals, again, that's an important line. If you turn that to false, you will still spawn monsters, but not the helpful animals. That's something that I will almost always leave as true. And online mode as well. What that does is that will connect to the Minecraft server to verify that the people that are connecting are people that should be connecting to your server. The next line is PVP equals true. I almost always turn this to false because personally I don't like PVP on a TechIt server. I think you know PVP is one of those things for more of a survival server. This is a collaborative sort of cooperative building server so it won't make a difference now because I'm the only person playing but generally I like to leave that as false. Difficulty. Difficulty zero sets it to peaceful. One is easy, two is normal and three is hard. So I like to leave that as one because that's the default. The next thing is game mode. You've got two options here, zero and one. Zero is uh, the standard survival. One is creative. So I normally leave that as being game mode zero. Now this max players, 
this is really dependent on the hardware that you have your server running on. You need approximately 256 meg of RAM allocated to Java for each player that you're going to have. It's actually a bit less than that. So if you're running Java on a 32-bit system, like my server is, you can allocate just over a gig worth of RAM. So that's generally, I found, enough for about four or five players. You could probably get a few more on, but then your internet connection starts to become the bottleneck because you need around about a 512k upload connection per person that you're going to have connected. So in my particular case, I've got a 3 megabit upload connection. So that allows me to have about six people connected. But what you have to remember is the way the system works is the server has to upload the information. But if you're playing at the same time, you have to be able to download. So in my case, that counts as two connections from my house. So that's why I can only fit five and not six. So again, spawn monsters true. That's pretty standard. What that does is that just turns on mobs. So you could turn animals on and turn mobs off and it would be like playing in peaceful except you could still hurt yourself. The next option is view distance. Now that's a value between 1 and 15 and that is how many chunks around each player it needs to load in. 10 chunks loading is enough for far view and it seriously impacts your bandwidth if you go any higher than that. But to make things a little bit smoother if you've got lots of bandwidth you can sometimes do view distance 15 and that will load extra things in further off. The next line, which is the last line you need to worry about, I always leave that true. If you turn that to false, things like nether fortresses and strongholds and NPC villages won't spawn. So that's basically how I like to have mine set up. The last line doesn't really matter. So I'm going to save that now because I've turned flight on, I've rechanged the name and I have set the game mode PvP to false, so we'll now hit save and close that. Now when I run this again, you will see that it will once again get to where it's creating a spawn area, because now in the background you can see that it has created Ticket 2 folders, because that is what I call the world that it's running on. So this will do its thing and it will run. There we go, it looks like that's finished. So I'm going to stop that running so that it saves the chunks. And I now know that it is correctly configured. So now is when you can start changing some of the configurations if that's what you want to do. The first thing that I normally do, because it's my server, is I add myself to the ops list so that that way I can have access to all of the commands from my PC instead of having to actually go into the console and run them. The next thing that I do is I go into plugins and I go into world edit and I open up the config. Again you've got to do the same thing with notepad but I've configured it to automatically use notepad plus plus and I really hate that when you use an axe it comes up with the world edit system so what I always do is I come down here and I change item 271, which is a wooden axe, to 2266, which is a broken record. Because you basically are never going to get a broken record that you're going to need to use in the game for anything. But as an op, if you ever use one, if you ever wish to use World Edit, you can just spawn in a broken record and use that. So that's basically how I set that up. So we'll now close that down. And we'll come back up. So here is your config file. Now this is something that is different in this particular version. If you, sorry I might have gone through that a little bit quickly. Basically what I've done is gone to the config folder. There's a file on there, NEI config. By basically setting lock recipe mode to true, that means even as an op, you won't be able to spawn items and using not enough items. So I almost always make that false. I don't tend to cheat, but if I ever need to cheat, or if anything ever glitches and causes problems, I like to know that I can cheat if I have to. So now you've basically got the server configured and ready to go. Now all you need is to configure your LogMe and Hamachi. So you click the power button to set yourself online. When I do that, you'll see that it, it probes for a while and then it synchronizes the network. And so there you can see the ANJ Stockwell test, which is what I will use 
once I set up my my server but for now I'm going to go through the process of creating a new network for you so you can set your own up so when you click the create network button it asks for a network ID and it asks for a password so you can type absolutely anything in here and it will work unless if it comes up with an error that normally means that network ID is already in use by somebody else it doesn't actually have an option to let you check to see if it's used it just comes up with an error if it is used and then you can type in the password if you want lots of people to connect to your server you generally want to make the password something that's pretty easy to recognize if you don't and you're just having it local then or just having it between a few friends you can create something that's going to be familiar that's going to be a bit harder to guess so that people don't connect in that you don't want them to so that's basically how you set that up and when you click create you will get a new option in here for the new particular server that you've just connected to so I'm, I'm not actually doing that because I'm going to connect locally but that's the process that you would go through so now what I want to do is double click on launch and I'll put this down here in the bottom corner so that will now my Technic server is now running on my system so what I'm going to do is now open up the Technic launcher so I've just got the latest version of the Technic launcher which is 0.5.4.4 which was updated uh, yesterday from this drop down box here normally if you're playing single player you will have Technic selected in this particular case you want to come down and you want to select Techit because this will give you the single player files that you need on options I would always use recommended builds for Techit for Technic it's really up to you what you use but for Techit you want to make sure you use recommended that way you know there's not going to be any problems with you trying to connect to the server and having something come up like uh, like an invalid server version or something like that so then you hit the login button and what it should do is it should now download all of the files you need and it should automatically downgrade from Minecraft 1.2 down to the version that it needs which is Minecraft 1.1 okay in this case it has given me an update failed message that means there is a problem with it trying to do the downgrade that it's trying to do and if that doesn't sort itself out this time this is going to make the video shorter than I was hoping for okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this as a two-part video I've done the part now about creating the server and once I get the actual tech it to install correctly on my system I will go through the process of showing you how to create the I guess the, the client portion of TechIt and connect to your server. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that at least for the server configuration part this was helpful and expect in the next couple of days to see an upload with how to create the client portion. Thanks very much for watching. Hey Stocky out.